Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn about relation operators and how we can utilize them in our program. So relation operators are used in performing tests. For example, it can use to compare two expression to see if they are related in a certain way. So if we have, for example, variable A and variable B, so it's going to compare if variable A is equal to variable B or if variable A is not equal to variable B and it will return a value if it is either true or false. So this is really good in performing simple tests and performing uh, executions. So it's going to execute a certain kind of code based on a certain condition. So there are several relation operators available in Kotlin. So let's explore them in detail and we can see them how we can use in our programs. So there are a bunch of relation operators. So for example, here we have the equal to, which is denoted by two equal signs. And this performs, for example, here, if we want to check, uh, this is a simple test that we want to check if two plus two is equal to four. So this actually returns a value, which is true. We have the not equal to, which is denoted by the exclamation mark and one equal sign, which denotes to not equal to. So we can perform also here a simple test and we can see that if the value is true or false, we have the less than, we have the greater than, we have the less than or equal to, which is denoted by the angle bracket and one equal sign. Also, we have the greater than or equal to, which is denoted by one angle sign, one angle bracket with the equal, equal sign. So this can be used in, in performing simple tests, as you can see here, and they are going to return a value which is either true or false, which it is a Boolean value. And Boolean value is a logical value having the, the values of true or false. So we can see them in, in practice, how we can use these values and print or execute a code in a certain condition. So now let's jump in in IntelliJ and perform a simple test. So we are here in this project window. We are going to create a new file here and let's call this main and let's create a new file. And as usual, create the main function here so now we are going to declare variables so that we can perform a simple test and see if these values are, are either true or false. So let's declare here, for example, variable A. We assign this value to 205, for example. Also, we assign here a variable B. We give it the value of 70, for example. So let's look here at variable C also and give it a value of 300. So now we want to perform a simple test here and see if the values print are true or false. So we are going to perform a simple mathematical operations. We are going to print these values either it is true or false. So let's create here a print lean function and we are going to use a string template here. So let's check if A is even. And here we're going to also use this string template, the dollar sign, but also introduce here these curly braces, which help us to perform a simple, a simple function. So we can perform here a simple test. For example, you can use A, then we divide this A by two by using the mod operator. And we're going to use this equal sign to see if the value is A is true or false. So it's going to give us, so if the value of A is even, it's going to print here true, or if it is not even, it's going to print here false. So let's duplicate this also. And here we are going to check if A is odd. And we want to print this if it is not equal to zero because we're using here the mod operator. So if it is divided and not equal to zero, it's going to be an odd number. So we want to check also here if A is greater than, is greater than B. So we can see here if A is greater than B. So let's delete this and see if A is greater than, than B. So we are going to see if A is greater than B or not. Also here, let's check out if A is less than, less than C. So let's check here and also we can delete this and check if it is less than C. So we are using here angle brackets to, to, to denote this one in order to see this. So now let's try to print here and see what's gonna give us. So let's run here, 
this application and see. So here we are performing simple tests in order to, to get the value. And we know that this value is going to return true or false. Now our program has finished to execute here and it has given us this answer. So is A, A is even, this is false because A is 205. We know this is an odd number and A is odd. Yes, it has printed to true because here it is an odd number. And also we can see here if A is greater than B and this is true because A is greater than B by default here. And A is less than C also it is true because A is less than 3. So as you can see here we have performed these simple tests and check out how how these programs is going to execute them. So we can use them in conditional execution and this is not from this video we're going to learn them in the next video how we can perform simple if else statements by using these relational operators. So now let's create here a, a simple math game that asks a user to compute the sum of two numbers and check if it's correct or not. So we are going to get the two values number one and number two and check if they are going to be equal or not. So let's explore this. Now let's delete this code because we don't need them anymore. So we're going to create here two variables. So we're going to call this num1. So we're going to hard code this to five and let's create here a num2 and let's give it a value of 15 here. So also we have to get the val for answer, but for now we are going to hard code them. And let's give this num1 plus num2, we know that it's going to be 15. So let's print this value here and check that if num1 plus num2 is equal to 20, let's print this to true. Or if it is not, it's going to print to false. So now let's write here print lean function and we use this dollar sign here to access the variable. So we are going to access num1. Then we say num1 plus num2 is equal to answer. So let's check this if it's going to be equal to true. So we're going to also use a string template here. So we are going to use this dollar sign and these two curly braces. So we are, we, we are using these curly braces here to introduce that we are going to perform a simple test here in order in, in, in this in this string template. So we are going to call here num1 plus num2. So we are going to perform a test here, but we are going to use two equal sign. If you use one equal sign, you're going to assign a variable. So you must use two equal sign here and we're going to provide the answer. So is this going to be equal to true? So let's try and run this one. And now our program is going to execute. Let's see. As you can see here now, our value 5 plus 15, we know that is 20. Also, it has given us the answer, which is true. So the value returned here is a Boolean, and this is true. So it can be used in, 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 in performing conditional executions, like using the if statement or the while loop. So you can use this, for example, here to print or to perform a certain action when this value is true. And this is out of scope of this video. So we are going to, sc to study this in the next videos. So right now, we are being hard coding these values here. We can try to change them to read from the user. So we are going to read here a certain function and we're going to discuss about these functions in, in, in more details in future videos. Now, let's collapse this one first. So we are going to get here a value from the system. We are not going to hard code these values again. And this is called iterative enhancement. So we are starting small, then we are building something complex. So we are going to remove these hard coded values and get the value from the system here to give us a certain number and we are going to get the answer from the user here and we are going to print this result here so first let's get the function here which is called random and this random function here is in kotlin which can be used to get the value so you have to select this random here with this with with, with something like kotlin logo here then call the dot we're going to get the int. So we want the random number, this random number to be int. And 
we want this number to be from until until 10 so it's going to start from 0 to 10 a random number of this range also here in we want a random number so we also want this to be also int a number of 10 so we are getting here a number from the system and this is going to be random number which we don't have to specify or hard code them again also here we want to get a value from the user so we must first tell the user that we want to provide a, a, a value so so let's tell him what is and use here a dollar sign that num1 plus num2 so here we are going to tell the user first to to type here the answer and we are going to get this answer from the system here from the console so we can call there is a function that is used to call this answer here and this is called read line so this function here is denoted to if you want to get the values from the user now if you call read line here it's going to return a string which here has shown us it's going to return a string that is either can be null or not null so we're going to call this dot then we want to convert this string to be an int so we are doing here conversion from string to int because this read line function returns a value of int and we're going to discuss this about return values and conversion in more details in future videos but right now let's call to int as you can see here we're getting an error and this error here shows us that only safe because this value can return null so we are supposed only to get we cannot convert a null value to int so kotlin is a safe language here and it tries as best as possible to minimize these errors so we have to specify that if it is null or not so we are going to use this double exclamation mark and this actually we are telling if there is a null value it's going to throw an exception and we're going to learn about exceptions in future videos but right now as you can see here these two exclamation mark tell us that it's going to throw an exception but we know that this value is not going to be null because we are trying to test here our code so let's see here now if we run our application and let's see if the user is going to get the the, the answer correct so now it has printed what is one plus six so here we know this value is going to be seven so let's try here type seven the console has not got the answer so let's try again seven here and now it has given us so one plus six equals to seven and this value is true as you can see here we have tried this and entering here and it has given us the the, the answer let's try to rerun this again and see what's going to be given us so now we have been given that what is three plus nine and because we have limited these values to this it's going to 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 give us these values from zero to to ten so we know this is going to be 11 here let's try to give it to 10 so this is going to be 12 so let's And now as you can see here our value is false so this is the way which you can use these values or these relational operators in your programs so we are going to use a conditional a conditional execution in the next video in order to to execute a certain function because of a certain value which we have got from from the calculation or from the user or from different places so if you find this video helpful please don't forget to subscribe and smash that bell icon and give us a thumbs up Thank you.